I'm giving them name tags so that uh, all right, happy we all know who they are, so they don't get lost on a big plane. What are you expecting from a trip? It's not a hard question. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Have fun. Meet new people. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, learn more about my Jewish heritage. Lots of traveling. Lots of great places to see. Nice. It's my friend Jenna. Hi. She's going to be laughing at me. That's right. That's right. We're excited for those cute Israeli. Yeah. yeah. We want some guys in the army. I don't really know anyone. I heard it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's not really like a, a religious, so it's up my alley. Exactly. Um, I've heard really good things also. Yeah? Yeah, I heard it was really fun. Good. So. Nothing but fun and beautiful. Um, Birthright Israel is the most important initiative happened in the Jewish people in the last 30 years. Personally, I have no doubt in my mind that in 20 years' time, Birthright Israel is going to be known as the program who changed the path of the Jewish history. Less mixed marriage, less assimilation, better connection with Israel. your message to them? Have fun and fall in love. pictures now you really need to have a big smile if you even if you think you are tired because your friends are going to see it like in two hours from now okay I am uh, Shlomo Lipschitz everybody calls me Momo that's my nickname uh, my mother gave it to me like when I since I remember myself and I was born raised in Israel I lived uh, I'm the president of Oranim who is a company that um, deal with anything uh, combined educational and travel, especially uh, in the Jewish uh, people's market. My dear friend, the word welcome home has a big meaning for me. I'm not crazy. For me, bringing you home, bringing you to Israel, bringing you guys home. You know, you guys think that home is somewhere uh, between uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, the Valley, whatever. But I'm going to teach you that by mistake, you guys live there. I don't like it, but I accept it. But the only place on earth that really is home, the only place on earth really belongs to us, the only place on earth nobody called nobody dirty Jew, is here. My dear friend, welcome to Oni Birthright Israel program. What I provide the birthrighters is first of all a tools, a body of information and tools to judge for themselves everything that this country stands for. I want to give them 
my knowledge in a way that is as broad as possible, give them a span of ideas that they can choose how to connect to Israel and how can connect to their Judaism and how to connect to being part of Israeli reality. I think with the growing influence the United States is having today in the world, it's obvious that the connection between the Jews in Israel and the Jews in the States is crucial. And uh, I have no doubt that this experience for, for American Jews, Canadian Jews, Jews from around the world is, you know, unforgettable. First of all, I have a beautiful background, which is the country of Israel. So uh, the material that I have to deal with is very, very good. I think I improved a little bit after I went overseas and learned how they live over there. And then I could cooperate or think how to feed them back from the Israeli point of view. I try to give them, on top of uh, the history, a little bit of pride of Judaism, a little bit of Israeli way of Judaism. I represent uh, the secular part of Jewish life in Israel, which I think personally that can be a good background to broadcast Judaism to people who are a little bit wobbly. A lot of people that were in my groups made Aliyah, um, they moved to Israel, um, and that, that was my goal. I'm in love with Israel, I want to show you Israel. I want you to fall in love with Israel, and that, that, was, that was the purpose. And I think that I reached it, uh, in a way. The other goal is that those groups will have a lot of fun, and of course you know that this is what they, this is what they do and this is what they have. I decided to come on Birthright because I wanted to experience this unbelievable place with my friends. And I've been here, this is my fourth time in Israel, but um, I thought it would be special knowing what it's been like and knowing the experiences I've had previously to experience it with them. I felt like ever since I had my bar mitzvah, I had been detached from my Jewish community. And uh, I felt like coming here would, would enhance that feeling. I felt I needed a a religious experience and coming here would, you know, help that a lot. Everything just fell into place and, you know, since the last year I've become more religious, more than I can possibly imagine. And this is just, it's a feeling that's indescribable. It's something in your heart that you just, I don't know. To learn really what, what my people are about, what, what I'm about, where, where we come from and how everything, how everything fits together so nicely. I just wanted to come to Israel, just, just always heard about it, you know, since I was young in Hebrew school. And I wanted to come just to see what it was like, to see, you know, it was always kind of like this like fantasy place. And now I get to see it's a real, it's a real place with like real people and I'm having a really good time. What is the catch? A free trip to Israel, are they going to try to, you know, convert me into like an Orthodox Jew or what is this, you know? So I had my reservations about it, but um, from all the people that came on um, previous birthright trips, I had heard a lot of great feedback, and you know, it's not um, anything like I had imagined. And so, when my friends were uh, had completely decided that they were coming on this trip, I thought, why not? I'll go with them. I grew up hearing about Israel as this foreign place, and. I wanted to make it a reality, and this was the opportunity to do that. Uh, I'm Liat, 23. Um, I want to experience something in Israel that I've never experienced before. Uh, I'm Jessica. I'm 20 years old and studying business, and I'm here to fulfill Momo's dream of finding a nice Jewish husband. <laughs> <laughs> Today you're going to Yerushalayim, and I'm jealous of those who are first time in Israel. I'm jealous. The only remain of our temple, the wall, that you're going to touch the Bible, like the Bible going to be alive in your hands. I wish I was 20 years old and feel the emotions involved in touching the wall for the first time. 
for you right now. We got Hamlet's speech. Remix style. To be or not to be. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. You know, I'm bringing to Israel the most unaffiliated participant on birthright Israel. Mostly just Jewish. Many, many mixed marriage families. And I can tell you that having a significant 10 day experience in Israel make these young people rethink about the future. Understand they belong to something by far much bigger than just their own life. Our expertise is to make these young people fall in love. Fall in love with the state of Israel. Fall in love with the Jewish history. Fall in love with their own people. I really felt like I had to fight for my heritage, you know, I always felt like I didn't really know where I belonged, what was going on, you know, they say that in mixed marriages often the children don't become Jewish. And with Oranim, that was the one thing that really compelled me to come back and be an ambassador is that they accepted me, 
you know, they asked me if I had one parent that was Jewish. They asked me if I was a member of the Jewish people. I was proud to say that I had, that I'd been raised with an awareness of the holidays. And that was it. And they accepted me. And once I came back from my trip, I was able to find other people like that in my own community that would accept me as well. I need your friendship. I need you to be part of my family. You guys live there, and I live here. I want you to understand we are a small family. Let's rebuild the family again. Your generation, I know some of you think that life started 20 years ago, right? When you came to the world. Wrong. Not even 48 years ago when I came to the world. We're all pieces in the chain of the Jewish history. We have thousands of years on our backs and behind us. And we have a, we have a duty to maintain our faith alive and to carry it to the, new, to the next generation. And the one thing you need to promise me today, you're going to raise your children Jewish. This is something that several, you know, a, a good portion of our trip um, probably never even, no, nobody ever told them this. Their parents never sat them down and said, you need to marry a Jew, or they didn't take it seriously. But it's so important because, you know, not, not raising a Jewish family is basically extingu extinguishing uh, you know, one family in a people that's already so very few. I don't think there's a bigger mitzvah in the world than to send Jewish youth who are at that prime state of questioning what is going on in their minds about religion and God and culture and what you want to do with your family and at that age where you're meeting someone who you're going to be with for the rest of your life possibly um, to create the, to enable us to create this connection with Israel is unbelievable. You guys have come such a long way. We've taken a trip that was given to you for free and with love from the Jewish people. But still, you've taken a decision. And I appreciate that you've also taken it, even though you might have had some concerns about security. And you've come all the way here. And even you know, though some of you have been joking that it's a free trip and etc., you've come all the way here. You would not have come if you weren't looking for something in your identity, if you weren't looking to find something inside. Today, <coughs> if you consider yourself a Jew, what does that contain? What does that consist of? These key questions are open questions. What I told you on our first day, if you remember, after you've been very tired, we were sitting on the stones of Jerusalem, is that this is about questions and answers. Maybe you're going to be continuing to answer yourselves your whole lives. Anymore, no one. And the Syrian knows it. No one. 
that it, it's a little bit cold up here, so if you have anything warm with you, take it. Young people, when they come to Israel, some of them are still very much afraid to come here. Their friends telling them, Oi ve Zmir, you're going to Israel, it's very dangerous, it's very frightening. People discover after a few hours that what they see on CBC in Canada and CNN in the States has nothing to do with the reality in Israel. But we try to keep our participants as safe as possible. My position here is to be the security guard, taking care of the basic security things, looking up for the guys, in addition, taking care of the, the medical things. My job is to protect the people that come into the hotel and um, make sure that nobody else comes into the hotel that doesn't belong to. Last time, it was in the winter, I, um, I backed out of the trip because I felt that it was going to be unsafe. and. Then I got it out and just went during this trip and I realized there was nothing to worry about. It's, it's totally fine. You feel totally safe at night. For a couple days before I started to leave, everyone was like, are you nervous? Are you nervous? It's like, you know, I don't even think about it. You can call me whenever you need. I'm telling this to my daughters. I'm telling you the same thing. I'm a trained officer. I'm, I'm wake up like this in the morning. Like this. If you need me, call me. He even gave us all his personal cell phone number if ever we had a problem or wanted to chat. I don't know, it's like you're in like this other country and it's... I don't know, I feel plenty safe. I had a few friends that didn't even come because of the reason that they thought it was dangerous or that it was kind of a hot spot. Well, the media tell you like Israel is a dangerous place, you shouldn't go there, it's like terrorist attacks and everything, but I think like, okay, there's a lot of people living here in Israel, they live every day, they get a job, they study, everything, and they're okay. We're having so much fun. We're going almost every night out, but we're doing as a group to a monitored places with the guard person as controlling the group. So there is a balance between freedom and protective. I think we found a nice way to do it. My love is like footsteps in the snow.
speaking to him only about peoplehood and about the familyhood. Maybe I'm serving like, like a father for all of them. Speak to them from my heart. And they know that I'm speaking from here. The fact that I'm speaking from here allows me to tell them whatever I feel. And they listen to me in a way most likely they won't listen to their parents as well. I love Momo. He's a great guy. His heart is in the right place. He loves love, as he says. And... Uh, you know, why not love everyone? Why not open your arms to everyone and welcome them? And it's a wonderful thing he's doing. I think he's passionate about what he does and he's very, very dedicated in doing so. I mean, he's been with us, this will be his third time being with our group and we're just one of about 30 different groups that we know that are here right now. And he also, right when I got off the flight, he like spun me around, like did a little dance and he's very friendly and definitely like, he said welcome home, like made you feel very welcome. It makes me think of Israelis in a better way. Exactly. Yeah. He's, he's a yeah. good Israeli representative. He's got a sense of humor, but at the same time he's very strong on what he feels and he doesn't have shame and you know, he doesn't hold back. He just he says what he feels and Yeah, it's like the minute I walked off the plane, we have Momo coming up and saying like yelling welcome home to everyone. And yeah, <laughs> you know, fun. and and he just he he's always like um but saying it's family, it's family, it's family, and really it is. I'm going to make you happy, you cannot even imagine. I'm asking my daughters what to do with you. What they tell me, I'm doing with you. I'm trusting them, they have a good taste. And they love me, so <laughs> very much. metropolis, Israel's commercial and cultural center, a city that truly never stops. Skyscrapers, modern office buildings, but also one building where it all began.
ברוכים הבאים, שלום. Not always do I want to return there. But these days, when the Jewish people face again a very difficult time, when the ugly head of anti-Semitism and hate directed at Israel, Jews, Zionists, or by any other name, is growing around the world in countries close and in countries afar, in countries where Jews live and in countries that are unified, free of Jews. I feel it is my duty to talk about the Holocaust, no matter how painful that may be. On a wagon bound for market, and there's a calf with a mournful eye. High above him, and there's a sparrow singing softly across the sky. And the wind is laughing, it laughs with all its might. Laugh and laugh the whole day through, and have the summer's night. Stop complaining, says the farmer Who told you a calf to be Why don't you have wings to fly with like the sparrows so proud and free and the wind is laughing it laughs with all its might laugh and laugh the whole day through and the sun is Calves are easily bound and slaughtered, never knowing the reason why. But whoever treasures freedom, like a sparrow, must learn to fly. And the wind is left. Some of you may become future leaders in your communities. It will be up to you to fight oppression and bigotry. It will be up to you to fight for the survival of the Jewish people. Aliyah to Israel is very important. I think that the Jewish people in the world need to understand the necessity of having a strong, stable, Jewish entity in Israel. In order to keep this state alive, in order to make sure it will never fall again, we need new Aliyah. But the kind of Aliyah we need is Aliyah from the West. We need to bring people who are strong by themselves. We are not going to sit on our welfare. People are going to give a huge contribution to this land. We need today young people to come from the West to live in Israel. Ten days is not enough in Israel. It, there is no amount of time that is enough to stay here. And I would, I'm really nervous to stay because I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to live in Tel Aviv. And the minute I decided, it freaked me out. And I'm so excited, but I started crying and wrote my journal. <laughs> and it just made, it's only been tears of happiness, though. Nothing else. Just talking to people that have, that have just decided to after a week in Israel, they just decide to take a year off and just study here, live here, and absorb the culture more. Um, I mean, it's something I thought about. It's a big move, but, but yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I feel at home here, and so it wouldn't be a bad idea. 
um, as the trip went on, I just started to feel more and more like I belonged and people were treating me with so much kindness. And now for the second time, I felt like I was going home, you know, and when Momo said welcome home, I could see the reactions in the eyes of the other kids and remember where I was a year ago and it kind of made me a little teary eyed because I felt like I do belong here. And so I do feel like this is my home. I think it's the interaction that makes both parties and both countries better. I think it's just a, a stronger union, but you know, there's there's an unwritten border and an unwritten law that we should we should tear down with all the heart in the world. There, there's no reason that we should be labeled as two different. We're both Jews, and we should all be you know living under the same roof, whether it be full time living or just having a house in Israel or in America, or vice versa. We need to connect that and make that connection and make the bond a lot str stronger because there is trying people trying to oppress that state or bring it down. And you know, if if we're Jews and we're fighting for the same cause, we got to all you know unite as one. It's good for you. The other Jewish in LA come to Israel. There's a big place and a big fantasy. The place of God. I'm I'm Jewish and I like I'm Jewish. I kiss this. This is the Magen David. Living in America, I see the people has a very distorted concept of what Israel is. This is Israel. It's hip and it's cool and it's young and yes it has a lot of political pressure but that's not all it is. People don't know the real uh, Israel. They think also always that Israel is a war and terror, and they, they don't. We don't have life here. It's important because they, when they came to Israel, they see the another culture. People, are, people are living in Israel. Come here, see Israel, love Israel, see the warmth of the people, see the beautiful view, see the historic, the, the, the historic face of Israel. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, those people will help us uh, bring peace and tranquility to this area. I think the, every Jew, you know, every one of our, our tribe is, have, had, has something, you know, in his, his black box connected to this place, you know. It's more than religion, more than, than blood even, more than culture, it's something that, Spiritual. It's very important for them to be here and to meet the family. It's like they are, they are our family, so they should be here. This country is our home. You are very gifted. You can have two homes. Today, if the Jews feel unsafe, you can come tomorrow morning. You guys, if you feel unsafe or you want to live in Israel, you come tomorrow morning to the immigration in Israel and say, I want to be an Israeli. On the spot, you turn to be an Israeli citizen. Israel is your age. Whom you're going to have? Eight of them, Israeli soldiers, boys and girls, going to join you for five days out of the of, out of your program. Okay, this is uh, Yoval. He's in the army. He loves it. Fights for his country, good heart, pride. <laughs> He's got more girls on the base than guys, so ladies beware. He's uh, been practicing. <laughs> He's, uh, he has uh, many talents. He plays the saxophone and the guitar. Woo! Yeah, you can yeah, say yeah, yeah, no, and I'm sure you sing. And the piano. Excuse me, and the piano. <laughs> uh, likes Americans, thinks they're very attractive. Very attractive a lot. Um, celebrities, she likes Julia Roberts, Brad Pitt. Yeah! You know. Um, um, I came to the Glit uh, through the army. My officer just like asked me if I want to go to the Glit. I said, uh, yeah, sure, why not? Actually, it was more like, Gal, you want to go to the Glit? Yeah, sure. So that's what it, how it went. Actually, I got really excited by, by knowing that I'm going to do it. So, and actually it turned out to be wonderful. At first, it was kind of weird. It was like, Okay, we, we ask usual stuff, where you're from, what you're doing in life. And then it become more and more like we began open and broke the ice and it was really cool. And you, you got really understood that they are like us, like they have their own, own dreams, own life and the except that we're soldiers. The five days I had the most fun in the whole life. I met amazing people. We had uh, a lot of adventures together. We got to know each other really good. And I got to know a lot of, like I knew, I, I've learned a lot of stuff that I haven't learned before, like 
how important Israel is for me as an Israeli girl and a soldier and how important for Jewish people around the world. It was really good. These soldiers um, have families and personalities and you can't just take them for granted. They're really, they're kids your age, you know, that could be me out there. And so it just, um, it made me appreciate their uh, courage more. And uh, I think that's wonderful what they do. I've made such good friends with all the soldiers and I think they're awesome. Yeah, they're very warm and inviting. Like I'm gonna go spend the, um, a couple of days with one of them as soon as this trip is finished and I think that's really sweet of her like you know as soon as we met they were just unbelievably sweet very warm like as much as we want to get to know them they genuinely want to get to know us too and I think that's like very special and important and like a bond that yeah. you wouldn't otherwise be able to find unless you go through a trip like this. Israel is in a very different situation in the world than most other places and I have so much respect for the soldiers and even though it's mandatory service here it, they are so brave and they are, like, I have so much respect for them. And they're amazing people. That's all. I guess when they were in your, their uniforms, it was more poised, I guess, you know? And um, they kind of had a guard up, I guess, to say. And when they changed their clothes and they just assimilated among us tourists, I guess, and just kids, it was a whole different experience and they really were able to experience the same things we were and I think there was a comfort level that was broken down for sure. It's going to be so hard like nothing you've ever done. Although I promise you it will be the best four months Don't of your move. life. Don't move. Face here. She's this is the last time that anybody, that anybody moves or speak. I'm the worst soldier in the I'm not going to be wise. 14. We look like soldiers. Don't. We look like soldiers. Doing the best. For the last time, Up. I want you to scream like hell. I've been thinking about it uh, the past few days. I actually, by this, by going to this trip with all the American guys and see how much like he, they like Israel, that's make that make that's make me a lot stronger. I like love Israel a lot more than I than I like it like four days ago. It's like an amaz amazing exp experience. Even though I'm in the army and I'm a, I'm a soldier and all this stuff. This four, five days make make the difference. It's like they don't have this old trouble of that we have, and it's like making us more serious and mature. But and then we forget a little bit about having fun and having real life, and they like remind us. And from the other hand, we give us this side of serious of matureness and. It's really good. We we'll, we'll like complete each other.
getting all crazy in Israel. You can scream and you can yell. Come on, baby, come to this town. Turn your frown upside down. First thing we did as soon as we got off the plane, got on the bus, went sightseeing all over Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, but as soon as we got to Eilat, all we had were two very, very, very chill out days and we were chilling out by the beach, chilling out by the pool. It really got me a really, really good chance to connect with everybody on this trip and it was a really great icebreaker. Eilat was the best experience of all, the whole trip. I think it's amazing, the water is so beautiful. We had this whole like nice weekend and it's really nice because it's like hard to pack up your bag every like 24 hours or less and go to another town. Like it's more relaxing and it's really nice. Like I like to like be immersed in the culture a little bit more. Feel less like a visitor. Um.
That's right. Israel is now uh, bring a lot of passion to my life because I do feel I'm making a change. I'm going to take back the experiences and hopefully being able to be more in a Jewish community at home because now you see what that can be like from being here. I think it would be an absolute shame if the trip ended. I do understand that um, financially, I mean, it's mind-boggling. It's painful to know that it's not under my control and I want to, I wanna, you know, shine some light onto everybody that I know that hasn't gone through this. We've experienced this with the best people. We've experienced this in the best place. And I just, I wish that I could thank them enough, but I can't, I, I don't know how to say it. I came and I didn't even know a single one of them, but it didn't matter. I just, I just started introducing myself. Hi, my name's Mike, what's your name? We met like that and it didn't matter. It didn't matter that we didn't know each other that maybe we have some big differences in what we feel, what we see, like our social, political views, stuff like that, but we're all Jews and we're all brothers and sisters and it doesn't matter, we can all come together just because of that. This is our home. Israel is our homeland. It's written, it's known, and it's the feeling, and the connection that we have to Israel. I've wanted to come here since I was probably 14 and being here, but I don't want to go home. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be a very fashionable event. It's like insane to have like five, six thousand people, all of them young, all of them Jews, all of them for Israel, one family, one people, united, one center in Israel. It can happen only in Israel. So God bless us all. Come home. For you, Israel is not a place to go. For you, Israel is home. It's your duty to come to Israel. And nobody is afraid to go home. That's what your duty is. You must come home. Come home and fall in love. By the fact your, le your leg is going to touch the Israeli soil, you're going to feel the connection. You feel how welcome you are. You feel that you belong to something bigger. You're going to fall in love. And Oranim is the expert people to do it for you. Um. His Royal Five.
experiences we've all had or things I think we can share and always remember. Next year, working on the boats, traveling, whatever I need to do to come back, <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs>